US President Joe Biden says he's going to stop the supply of weapons to Israel if it launches an all-out attack on Rafah. Now, for weeks, Washington has been pressuring Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu not to send forces into the city. Heidi Joe Castro reports from Washington, D.C. It's, it's just wrong. The U.S. president said for the first time in an interview with U.S. media on Wednesday that U.S. military aid to Israel will be conditioned on the Israeli military's actions and acknowledged that U.S. weapons are being used to kill civilians in Gaza. Civilians have been killed in Gaza as a consequence of those bombs. They go into Rafah. I'm not supplying the weapons that have been used historically to deal with Rafah. I've made it clear to Bibi and the War Cabinet. They're not going to get our support if, in fact, they go in these population centers. The major shift in position from Joe Biden, who has previously pledged unconditional support for Israel, was foreshadowed by a recent delay in providing U.S. bombs to Israel. The U.S. Defense Secretary told a Senate panel the delivery was paused due to concerns about Israel's plans to invade Rafah. Israel shouldn't launch a, a major attack in Rafah without accounting for uh, and protecting the civilians that are in that battle space. Uh, and, and again, as we have uh, assessed the situation, uh, we paused one shipment of high, high uh, uh, payload uh, munitions. Biden has faced increasing pressure from protesters who have demonstrated in solidarity with Palestinians across American college campuses and in Chicago, where he made a campaign stop on Wednesday. Biden has also faced calls from progressive members of his own party to end Israel's unconditional military aid. Congressional leaders offered a muted response to the delayed arms shipment. I uh, believe that Israel and America have an ironclad relationship and I uh, have faith in what the Biden administration is doing. I continue to express my concern to the administration that the delay of shipment of weapons to Israel is just another way of trying to tell an ally how to conduct the war. Biden says the U.S. will still provide Israel with defensive weapons. And the U.S. Defense Secretary says the U.S.-Israeli alliance remains ironclad. But a major ground invasion of Rafah would be seen by the U.S. as a red line. And Biden says Israel crossing it would be, quote, just wrong. Heidi Joe Castro, Al Jazeera, Washington. Well, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has shut down Al Jazeera's operations. So our correspondents are now reporting from outside Israel. Mohammed Jamjum is joining us from the Jordanian capital, Amman. So we'll, let's talk, first of all, uh, more about this uh, threat by Joe Biden to block weapons if there is any action in uh, Rafah. What's the Israeli response to that so far? So, Rob, we've not yet heard anything official from Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, but we are seeing a lot of quotes attributed to anonymous defense officials, members of the security establishment in Israel. They are appearing in Israeli publications and media outlets uh, the last few hours. And these officials are expressing a lot of concern about what this means going forward. They're concerned about how this might affect Israel's preparedness uh, when it comes to the war in Gaza, as well as conflicts on other fronts going forward. Also, these defense officials are telling these Israeli media outlets that they are worried about what this means about the state of the relationship between Israel and the United States. Uh, some of these uh, officials are saying that Israel's adversaries may perceive this particular crisis is an opportunity to undermine Israel. Uh, then there are other defense officials that are saying that um, some senior defense officials are telling counterparts in the government that the government really needs to start heeding the warnings of the Americans because they are very worried that this could be a major fracture in the relationship and they don't know quite what that means for Israel going forward. Now, beyond that, just in the past 10 minutes or so, we are seeing that Israeli far right wing national security minister Itmar bin Gavir tweeted that Hamas loves Biden. This clearly in response to that interview that Joe Biden gave and the decision to halt weapon shipment if uh, Israel were to continue going into Rafah. 
Beyond that, uh, you've had the head of the opposition in Israel, Yair Lapid, who has responded to that tweet by Itmar bin Gavir. Lapid has said, every Israeli is in danger if Netanyahu doesn't fire Itmar bin Gavir today. So clearly you can see that the right wing in Israel, far right wing ministers, they are very angry about Biden's decision and about the halt of weapons. The defense establishment is very concerned about what this means for the, uh, for Israel going forward and the relationship with the U.S. And now you have members of the opposition who are furious that Itmar bin Gavir would tweet something so incendiary saying Hamas loves Biden, indicating that essentially Hamas is very happy that Biden decided to stop weapon shipments to Israel. And of course, in the, in the background to all of this, uh, Mohammed, the talks are continuing in Cairo. There's been a lot of speculation around these talks over the last uh, few days. Um, from your perspective of where you are, what What's the interpretation of where things lie with those? Well, that's very much an open question at this hour. Obviously, it continues to be a very complicated situation. There are so many contradictory reports throughout the Israeli media landscape and throughout uh, other uh, uh, media landscapes in the region, other reports. Um, you have reports emanating out of Cairo that the gaps are narrowing. You have reports in Israel saying that major gaps remain and that Israel continues to maintain that what has been presented to them as far as the proposal that Hamas has accepted, that that crosses all the red lines when it comes to Israel. Look, it is complicated. Uh, the devil is very much in the details. Uh, the CIA chief, William Burns, was in Israel yesterday. He met with Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. He met with other members of the security establishment. It's being reported in Israeli media that Burns said to his counterparts that this should not be considered to be an end to the war, that this should con be considered to be a pause to the war, that it should be a positive development, and that further actions can be negotiated after that. Um, but when you look at articles emanating out of Israel, especially when they're quoting right-wing politicians, um, they are saying that red lines very much still remain, and there seems to be a lot of skepticism by members of the right-wing coalition of the government that this can actually be achieved. Nonetheless, Bill Burns uh, is back in Cairo now. The talks are continuing. The Israeli delegation is in Cairo. The Hamas delegation is in Cairo. Other delegations are in Cairo. So we'll just have to wait and see as to how this develops going forward. Rob? Mohammed Jamjoum in Amman. Mohammed, thank you. Make sure to subscribe to our channel to get the latest news from Al Jazeera.